Welcome back to another top 10 video with yours truly, Sam Healy, all by my lonesome. And, uh, you know, Tom has done his top 10 games from all the publishers known in existence, right? So I figured I could do some of those myself. This one is going to be my top 10 games from Fantasy Flight. Uh, now, Fantasy Flight is a company that really has kind of morphed and changed over the years as far as the kinds of products they offer and, and that type of thing. So I, I wasn't truly certain that I could get 10 games out of that, but I definitely did uh, because I have liked a lot of their games, but I've also disliked some of them as well. So uh, there is that. But these are the 10 games that are my favorite games that Fantasy Flight has put out. So let's go ahead and get to it. Number 10 is a uh, RPG-esque uh, storytelling game called Legacy of Dragonhold. Now, uh, Tom and Z were not so savvy on this one, and I thought that some of the descriptive wording was a little bit verbose uh, throughout the course of the thing. They spent just too much time describing things, but at the same time, that was one of the things that I also liked about it because it helped me put myself into that world a little bit better. But it was a really neat storytelling game that uh, really kind of mimicked that of an RPG and going through it and uh, uh, just interacting with all of the different people that are in the world around you. And it was almost like having a, a dungeon master in a box. Uh, so that and it, and it took you through uh, your your D and D campaign like a dungeon master would, and I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it, and I thought it was really neat. And it just squeaked in with number ten. So that's my number ten fantasy flight game, Legacy of Dragonhold. Number nine is a what probably is considered a classic by some, Mansions of Madness. This is the second edition with the app driven uh, com companion, I guess you could say. Uh, and this is really the only true Cthulhu-esque Lovecraftian game that I really enjoy. And I think the reason for that is while the, you know, the Cthulhu baddies are there and they're kind of in the background until they actually show up. Until they actually show up, you're just kind of in this uh, mysterious mystery uh, trying to figure out what's going on and how to f how to solve the problem type of idea, uh, but it's kind of creepy but not really horrific. And I like that about the game. Um, it it provides a a neat um, thematic immersion that uh, some of these Cthulhu games just go over the top with, and Mansions of Madness manages not to do that and that's why uh, i really do enjoy it we just played it over at roy's house a few uh, a couple weeks ago and really had a great time with it and that kind of renewed my interest in it so uh, that's my number nine mansions of madness number eight is one that we've talked about ad nauseum sometimes here on the dice tower and that is because it has been tom's favorite game and now it is his second favorite game that is cosmic encounter uh this is uh, one that uh, actually has made my top 100 list so i do enjoy it a lot, but I will say that uh, you really have to have the right kind of people to play this game with. It just doesn't work with everybody, and and you know many games are like that where they just don't work with everybody that you can sit down at a table and play with. You have to have a certain kind of uh, people to play, and you have to have a certain kind of camaraderie that's already kind of there. Uh, the times that I've played um, Cosmic Encounter outside of my own game group, they really have been hit or miss. Uh, I just played it most recently at Dice Tower West, and uh, I was the only person in the game that wasn't part of a friend group or a group of friends, and they were all very uh, comfortable with each other, and I was just having a good time. So it really worked well in that situation, but I have had other situations where it just kind of fell flat. Uh, so it's it's a good game. I really do enjoy it, but it is one of those hit or misses, uh, depending on the people that you play with. with. But uh, I love the, 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 the how many races are in there and the number of choices that you have. You'll never, never, if you really wanted to try, you would take forever to play all of the different races. So that's uh, a cool thing. I like it a lot. And the gameplay is fast and fun as well. Uh, but you really do have to take it with a grain of salt. But that's my number eight, Cosmic Encounter. My number seven is a game that I've talked about a lot as well, especially when we talk about smaller box games. Fantasy Flight is usually about the big boxes. Uh, lots of components, lots of plastic, lots of cardboard. Uh, but this one is a uh, the, almost the antithesis of that, and it's called Age of War. Now, Age of War comes in a box 
box that is about that big and it has a, a set of dice in it and then it has a bunch of cards and that's it. The cards represent different castles that you're trying to vie for control with and the dice are, 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 are you're trying to roll these different combinations to control those different uh, castles and hopefully get sets of them so you can turn them over and get them protected. It's a really fun game and I've, I've enjoyed it immensely. It's done very well in gateway situations as well because it does have a very Yahtzee-esque feel to it. Uh, but Age of War, it has a great Japanese theme that's uh, wrapped around it. The dice are very nice. Uh, the cards are are well designed and they're good stock, but uh, generally speaking, the cards are, you know, eh, what you would find in any, any uh, game pretty much, but the dice are really nice. Uh, so uh, that's my uh, number seven, Age of War. My number six is now I don't think any no longer published by uh, Fantasy Flight, although I could be wrong. It's it's I believe it's changed hands here recently, and that is Fury of Dracula. I'm going to say specifically third edition because I've not yet played fourth edition, but I think it's fourth edition is is pretty much just a reprint of third edition. They didn't change anything or anything like that. But just for posterity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and say third edition because that is the most recent one I've played, and it's the one that I choose and I have on my shelf. Uh, so Fury of Dracula is one of those great uh, one versus all games where you're trying to, uh, the one person is trying to stay away from the group of hunters and the hunters are trying to corner the person down. There's hidden movement in it uh, where Dracula is able to uh, move across the board and you can't see where he's going. He'll pop up every once in a while and then you'll start heading his direction. He pops up somewhere else. It's really fun. But on top of that, he also can leave his minions behind to deal with the hunters that are on his tail. It's just a really fun game and it is uh, has a lot of thematic oomph to it as well. Uh, so I just really have enjoyed this game over the years. I've played it not, uh, I've, I played second and third edition, I believe. I didn't play first edition. Um, I, I just wasn't into games back then, but I really do have a fun time playing this game when it hits the table. So that's my number six, Fury of Dracula, third edition. My number five is a game that I wish Fantasy Flight would just simply breathe some life into, at least reprint the base game, something like that. It is called Tannhäuser. And Tannhäuser is one of those games that has a one of the best line of sight mechanisms I've ever seen employed in a board game and uh, it is amazing the the circles system I don't know exactly I can't remember what they call it but uh, each circle on the board uh, which represents the different places that your your characters can move are color coded and if the circle you're standing in uh, has a color on it that matches the circle or one of the colors on the circle where the your target is you have line of sight done. There's no rulers. There's no uh, laser pointers. There's no uh, taking a piece of paper and lining it up. And uh, none of that. Does the color match on the circle where you are? Yes. What about where your target is? Yes. Then you have line of sight. Go ahead. Roll your attack. I love that line of sight mechanism. I also like the uh, universe. It's kind of a Hellboy-esque universe that it's in. A, a, a paranormal shift from World War I, World War II. So I really do enjoy the game. It, it's uh, There's a lot Lot of it and unfortunately it's highly highly out of print and uh, very hard to get a hold of but if you do happen to find it you would do yourself a great service in picking it up especially if you like those kinds of uh, uh, you know move and shoot type of games uh, so that is my number five Tannhäuser my number four is uh, Mission Red Planet. Now this one I've enjoyed ever since the first edition it came out. The second edition is amazingly well done. Uh, just love the components in second edition and I love the artistic style of second edition as well. First edition was great as well, but second edition really just hit its stride. I really enjoy the uh, simultaneous action selection that you have here, area control mechanism as you're trying to uh, control different areas in Mars. And uh, there's just so many good things about this game and I really enjoy every single time. It's one of those games where it ends before you're ready to, ready for it to be over uh, because you're enjoying it so much and you're, you're enjoying doing what it allows you to do and then it comes up and says, oh, we're about to score. Oh, no. You know, and you have that uh, idea of, well, now what am I going to do? That kind of thing. But you've enjoyed yourself. It's just that now you're in crunch time. Uh, so I like that and uh, I think it's great that a game can immerse you in, in itself that way so that you don't really see the passage of time. You don't really feel 
feel the rounds as they tick by, but now it's it's time to go and, and, and you have to score. So I, I enjoy that. I really enjoy Mission Red Planet. And if you have not tried it, you need to. I really like it. Number four, Mission Red Planet 2nd Edition. My number three is a game that I have played a lot. And I've played it a little bit more recently than I have in, in years past. Um, uh, and that's mainly because of Mr. David Peterson, because he always asks me, so if, whenever, whenever we're at a convention together, I can guarantee at some point in that convention, David Peterson is going to ask me if I want to play a game of Battlestar Galactica. And uh, he's such a nice guy, and uh, he does a very good job at running the game, so I know it's going to be a streamlined experience, so I, I, uh, I usually say yes, because I do enjoy the game a lot. Um, it's it's uh, one of those things, one of those games that has an IP a, a attached to it that really puts you into that IP. Sometimes, well, often, IP games or internet intellectual property games are ones that... Uh, they have decent mechanisms, but the mechanisms don't always match the theme, and, and they rely on the theme to kind of carry over lackluster, maybe even mediocre mechanisms. This one isn't like that. Uh, this one has a very solid game at its core, and the IP really uh, enhances the game, uh, and vice versa. So I, I just really enjoy it. have a great time playing it most of the time. The last time wasn't so good because I didn't like some of the modules that we used, but I still enjoyed the experience a lot. And that is my number three, Battlestar Galactica. My number two is what I have affectionately referred to as Star Wars in a Box from Fantasy Flight, and that is called Star Wars Rebellion. Now, in the in the base set, the combat is a little bit wonky. Um, if you really want uh, what I think they should have released in the base set, you'll have to get the Rise of the Empire expansion for it, and that really modifies combat to where it, I think it should have been, uh, and it's really nice. I, I enjoy the game a lot, and it is a very much, in my opinion, Star Wars in a box. It just grabs that uh, galactic-wide rebellion feel that really is missing in a lot of the uh, Star Wars games that are out there. Um, they're very microcosmic. This one is definitely macrocosmic, and it really takes a look at the big picture rather than focusing in on one specific battle on this planet or that planet over there. And that's what I really enjoy about it. It's just this epic game uh, that's based in Star Wars, and I really enjoy every time I play it. So that's my number two, Star Wars Rebellion. And my number no, my number one fantasy flight game, uh, you knew it was coming, that is Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. Now I have uh, been, uh, it has been at the one or two position ever since we've been doing top 100s, because I enjoy it that much. It is exactly what I want from a, a, a a sprawling, epic 4X space game. Uh, and yeah, it does take a little bit longer to play, about an hour a player. Uh, but, you know, the, the you don't feel the time passing by as you're playing the game. You are so enthralled, you're so uh, encapsulated in this game that you uh, are almost in a pocket of time, outside of time. Uh, and you just don't feel it. And when you when you're when we're done, you look up and you're like, "Wow, that was great! It's been how long? I didn't even realize it." At least that's been my experience, and most of the people that I've played with. So that is my number one. You knew it was coming, and you knew it was probably going to be there. But uh, Twilight Imperium Fourth Edition, my number one fantasy flight game. And so that's that, my top 10 fantasy flight games. I hope you enjoyed uh, my list, and I hope uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for joining me. Certainly appreciate it. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.